Good evening and welcome back to Survival Sea Lab. I'm Odi Apparatus. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at our crafting system and see what's been going on around the Sea Lab between episodes here. So let's get going. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to be taking a look at our crafting system, specifically our applied energistic system today. Uh, before we do that, let's take a look and see what's been going on between episodes. Last time we caught the spider fish, which we have right here, and we only caught a couple of them. I caught maybe four of them, and so I bred them together, and I put it over here, and these guys require brackish water. Now I couldn't tell, before I couldn't tell what the filtrator upgrade mark one did, because it wasn't turning into fresh water, but what it'll do is turn salt water into brackish water, and then the tier two will turn salt water into fresh water. So, these guys need brackish water to breed. We got the first batch of them done here though, and they produced a lot of string for us, the water droplets, which are not too useful. And, 4,500 fish eggs, because the spider fish have a very high fertility. I believe that's one of the highest ones I've seen here so far. Extremely high fertility rate. They produce a ton of eggs on every single uh, breeding. So we should be able to get a good number of spider fish for our breeding purposes here. I'm going to go ahead and throw them into our new incubator here. I set up a series of three here, and then I have them pumping out the back into this gold chest here. So if they do produce even half of what's there, hopefully it'll fit right inside this bad boy right here. Uh, I don't know if they'll produce that much, but uh, it, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I did a little upgrading here. I got the advanced hyperkinetic upgrades on just about everything now. Um, and I can't do too many more of that because it, the RF will drain out. Now the RF, these uh, pipes, the gold redstone conduits will, will provide 10,000, but I don't think our, we're producing that much, nearly that much with our uh, reactor. So we might have to take a look at the reactor, maybe overhaul that a little bit. If we want to get stuff go even faster than it's going now, get it going really fast. Our automatic fisher, how did this do? Uh, our automatic fisher actually caught our final fish here. The silver stripe blossom is what we were finally looking for. And did we get two of them? We got a male and a female. That means we can breed these together. And because we're in a good biome here, it shouldn't be any problem whatsoever to do that. Uh, we also got some tuna here, which actually saves us some time because tuna is a recipe that we were working on uh, with the goldfish, I think. Let's take a look here quick. What's the recipe for tuna? It is perch and salmon. And perch is goldfish and damselfish. So that actually cuts out a uh, step of our process. We don't have to worry about breeding the perch together to get the tuna because we already have those live. So we can actually throw those in their designated area. Let's see, tuna. I have these kind of organized in a weird way, uh, but it's kind of spiraling around. Uh, basically, it's it's following the, the uh, item IDs, but it's also spiraling around uh, with each item ID. So it's, it's, it's a very strange setup. I don't know why I went with that, but it made more sense out of anything for me. Uh, to set it up this way. Let's take a look and see how these are doing. Uh, they actually did work. Okay, so I was last episode I was having trouble getting these to breed because the temperature is so low down here. Where's my uh, my good old uh, temperature gauge here? Let's take a look here quick because the temperature right now is negative or zero degrees right now. So it's freezing around here basically. But I noticed that the temperature does vary by time of day. So there's certain times of day when uh, they'll fit right into this uh, 28 degree increase we can do with the ultimate heating upgrades during the afternoon during like noon times it won't it'll be too hot for them to breed but then in the evening time it will cool off enough that this will be perfect for the temperature for breeding for these two fish so we actually it took about it took all four of our uh, neon tetras to get these breeding here so hopefully we get a lot of fish from this 130 here i really hope we do because that'll be disappointing if we have to go fishing again i really hope we don't have to but we'll see what happens we'll throw these ones into this next one here and we'll get those breeding. Did we get any spider fish yet? No, nothing coming through yet. These are set to auto eject. Yes, they are. They're all three are. Okay, so now we have to think about what we want to do. For our blossom, we don't need to actually do any upgrades or anything like that. So we can just throw those bad boys right into the fishery here and pull this one out. And let's put those in there. And they should be going to town. They like the salt water. They like everything. So all they need is food, which we have some cod. I'm sure we can produce into food here. Actually, we might have some food just sitting around. Yeah, 29 fish meal. All right, let's just take half of that. Uh, my, my, my oysters have been doing very, very well here. Uh, I got a couple more of the white ones. So as you can see, this one is producing white constantly uh, because it has a white pearl block underneath it. Uh, you might hear that I have my power armor back in effect here. We did a little bit of upgrading on these. I'm still missing. The only thing I'm missing is enough energy for these, but I have everything else I'd pretty much want on there. Um, the white ones we need to make the filtrator upgrades, which are going to be very important for, for different biomes fish that we use. Uh, I'll come back and pick these up later. 
Uh, it's not a big deal right now, but how are we doing in here? We got plenty. So actually, we might want to start crafting some jewelry. Maybe next episode, we can start crafting some cool jewelry and maybe get some cool enchantments on that. I have plenty of levels, as you know. I have a big stockpile there. I don't know how many levels it's gonna, actually going to boil out to, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Neon Tetris can go back into the bin here. Let's get rid of those. And uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good here. So any other fish bred just yet? Oh, we got our first spider fish, so it's already proven to be quite useful. Uh, they've replaced the... Let's see, they replaced the male already. So we'll see. Let's see what happens. I mean, they've they've gone through a lot so far, haven't they? I bet. Uh, actually, no, it's going to take a long time to get through this. I could put another upgrade on there, but you know what? It doesn't really matter that much. Um, let's put the upgrade into this one here, because we also did get a uh, goldfish. Where did I put that? Where did I, where did I put that? Um, right here. Okay, so the goldfish, we actually did manage to get one bread. We got the goldfish minnow hybrid. Uh, what can we use this for here? Let's take a look and see. What can we make next? We can make the perch next, which is going to require damselfish, which also, again, is very picky about the water they use. Uh, what else can we make with the goldfish? We can make salmon, which is going to be important, but we don't have any neon, te neon tetras for the moment. Uh, we can make, uh, I guess, perch, perch and salmon are what we're going to need right now because everything else is going to require the tetras. Now, this is a nice fact that it can produce two things. So it'll produce salmon and produce trout, but we'll need some more tetras for that. So I think for now... Let's try breeding together the damselfish and the goldfish, and we'll see what happens here. So let's grab a damselfish out. We have a, let's see, what what what, uh, what gender was this one? It was a male, so we need a female damselfish. Now, I don't know if the recipes, because it did say that the recipe required a, a different type of damselfish. I think it was, I think it was, what in the recipe is it said, uh, that the, oops, what is that? No, not that. Uh, let's check this. Uh, it said it needs to be a female goldfish. We have a male goldfish. I don't know if that matters. We'll have to find out. We'll put this into here, and we probably have to raise the temperature up, though. Uh, so let's put our goldfish into here, and our damselfish into here, and he's not going to like it because he prefers fresh water, so we can fix that, no problem. And then he thinks it's too cold. We'll raise that up, and now he's going to say it's too hot by one degree. Oh, my God, one degree. And it's already negative five, so it means we're going to have to wait until um, we get another, like, afternoon, probably. So 13 degrees is the difference there. If I could raise that up maybe five... Maybe that'll work because the next upgrade, I mean, that's, it's only going to work at certain times of day, just like the other one. So let's go over to our uh, crafting area here. Let's grab the upgrade that will make it just plus five degrees. And that should be perfect for him. Not right now, obviously, but uh, in a moment or two when the when the temperature is a little bit lower in the day. Let's see. We have a basic one. What happened to my other, my other uh, standard ones? Hmm. It is a mystery. But we can craft them quick. Uh, let's see. Heating upgrade. Let's see. Let's just craft another one of these. It's two. That's five. So we need the advanced heating upgrade. So we'll craft one of these. Actually, we can just don't. We can just do all at once. So we'll just do it like uh, this. Let's craft this one here. Begin. And let's see if it's missing anything. Let's tap down to the bottom floor. And nope, oh, it's not missing anything. It should have made it right away. All right. So there it is. Okay. So let's put that one in there. And hopefully the temperature will swing in the direction of being a, a good temperature for these guys. Negative five is as low as it'll get down here, I think. That's the lowest I've ever seen. So if it's if it's going to be too hot with two 14s in there, hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, I don't know what we're going to do. He's still too cold. It's eight degrees. Let's see. It's negative five right now. I've seen it get as high as plus two. So actually, he might just be like one degree away from where he needs to be. So that's unfortunate. We might not be able to breed the damselfish and the goldfish down here. Um, so that's uh, pretty bad. But we'll see what happens. I'll leave them like that for now, and we'll see what happens with that. And let's go take a look at it, see if our Tetras have gotten anywhere in the short time we've let them be going here. No, no, no such luck with the Tetras. And if we have to go fishing again, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. But we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. Let's throw our uh, raw spider fish. Now, what can we do with these? Can we turn them into this tournament fish meal? I guess. Only two fish meal for the spider fish. I wonder if there's a better use for these guys. Let's take a look here quick. Um, just crafting recipes like that. We can make the fish scanner. Oh, we should probably work on that. We probably have everything we need. We need poison droplets still. I know we have... Oh, we don't have nether droplets either. We have earthen droplets. We don't have an ender droplet yet, but we'll put the nightfish breeding here soon um, once we have the means to do that. I mean, we have the means to do it probably now. But uh, let's throw these... Let's see, we have a cod, and those guys can go back in their own bins. Sorting these out manually kind of sucks. We can actually get a better better system for this eventually, I hope. I don't know, I've been having some problems with the the, the uh, item ducks and fish for some reason. Some, it works for this one, it works to transfer over, but I can't put them into the fish tanks, it seems like. So, if my goal here is fish tanks, it might not work. But again, item ducks with regular chests work fine, so I'm not sure. 
but we'll see what happens there. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about today, I wanted to look at my fluid crafting system. I started working on this a little bit uh, between episodes, and you might have noticed the last episode, I already had the fluid duct thing on there, the fluid crafting terminal on here. And what this is, basically, it's a special uh, mod that gets in, puts extra cells, that's the name of the mod is extra cells, it puts extra cells into applied energistics. So, for instance, what you would start with is you want to start crafting an extra cell, a fluid cell. So we can make a 1k me fluid cell, and the recipe for that is, uh, basically there's these fluid storage cells you have to make. So the recipes are pretty similar to the regular storage cells you'll see, uh, the regular storage drives you'll see. But uh, these, store these fluid storage cells only hold fluids, and they only can hold five types of fluid. But that's not, there's not that many types of fluid you'd want to put in there in the first place. So, first thing you got to craft is one of those, and the second, that'll just go in your normal drive. And the second thing you need to craft is a fluid terminal. And the fluid terminal is, let me pull the recipe up for that. Fluid terminal is basically the same thing. Access terminal plus a Certus tank, which is part of the extra cells mod, and then covered cables with some iron. So it's not too expensive, actually. Especially if you have the computer set up, you can just program it in there. And uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about too much then. Uh, I've got a lot of recipes getting program programmed in here now. Uh, it's been pretty great, especially getting my armor going again here. It was it was much less hassle this time around now that I had the uh, armor um, and, and the automated crafting here. Uh, so what we can do with this basically is that we can actually store fluid in it. As you can see, there's 75 buckets of water stored in this. And the way that I get that in there is, first of all, I have a aqueous accumulator. And aqueous accumulators, of course, can just generate water from thin air. They just suck the moisture out of the air. And so it'll slowly boost this up. The other thing you need to have is a fluid interface. And this bad boy, once you connect it to something, you can tell it which direction it's coming from. You put a bucket of water there to it to tell water is coming from the bottom, for instance, and then it'll start filling in whatever's from the bottom. It'll start filling that in there, uh, whatever whatever fluid's coming in through there. And then we use a fluid import bus, again, part of the extra cells mod, to pull that into the system. You can actually plug it in anywhere. You don't have to pull it into the crafting chamber. But uh, the crafting chamber is what this whole thing is all about because the crafting chamber basically lets you use recipes that have those fluids in the recipe. Now, you have to use the actual uh, bucketed fluids. You can't use, like, the fluid transposer recipes or anything like that. You have to use ones that require a bucket. So for instance, I have the coolant cell, which is actually really kind of a tough recipe to make automatically. Um, so the, the 1K, 10K coolant cells are used in uh, upgrades, in overclocking upgrades, which I'm gonna be doing a lot of in the near future here. So I wanted to get an automated way to make those. So basically what we can do is I'm telling it that it needs, uh, use the recipe that requires the bucket of water. And we can actually, let's just pull that recipe out and I'll show you that way, because it'll be easier to see. Um, so I put the bucket of water and the templates together and actually so once you put this in there It's gonna it's gonna realize that hey a bucket of water can come right from the fluid crafting system And it pulls a bucket of water out of there. We can also do the same thing with lava So let's actually grab a bucket here and we'll throw a couple buckets of lava in there because there's a couple things that we want to make I don't have a lava bucket in there already. Let's go buckets And we can craft a couple of those. Let's craft like five buckets and we'll make five buckets of lava Sounds good to me. I think I have a lava um, thing over here. Let's see. Yes, there it is. So I'll just grab it out of here and uh, that'll be fine. I could set the whole thing up with one of these if I want, but I noticed that when I did that, I did that with the water initially, but when I did that, it started draining out the, the ender tanks so fast that it couldn't keep up with the rest of the systems. And I don't have so many systems relying on those ender tanks that I don't want to accidentally screw anything up. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell this that we want to make, um, what can we use with lava buckets that we're going to actually need here? Uh, let's see, buckets, let's see here quick. Uh, lava crystals actually might not be a bad thing to do because it does require lava. There's not a lot of recipes that require the actual lava bucket. Now this one requires, I don't know, not using it, but the refined firestone, for instance, that would be very useful because you can get four buckets at once and you don't have to have, you only have to have four buckets in your system for it to work, I believe. DNA insulator, we'll probably do something with advanced genetics here soon too. Lava crystals, that would be super helpful for, um, when you're doing the blood magic stuff. Same thing with these lava sigils and the sigil of the dome and that kind of thing, where you can just have the system pulling it in automatically, that'd be huge for that. Anyways, the one thing I want to do, I think, is the lava crystals. So let's encode a lava crystal pattern. Um, let's go uses. And I'll encode that. I think we'll just use the first one here. I don't think it matters that much. And let's go put it into here. And then we can go into here and we can just do a drop off for our buckets here. We don't actually have to put them in via the uh, interface thing, as long as we're using the, the crafting terminal here, the, the fluid terminal. And then what we can do is, yeah, so there's four buckets, 4,000 4, millibuckets or four buckets worth. This is 76 buckets worth of water, but I think the four buckets will get us pretty far. Oh, we got one more here, why don't I just put that in there too? 
All right, we could always fill it up with more if we want to, but I think five buckets is gonna get us pretty far for right now because we can make ourselves five lava crystals. So if we go back in, we should see the lava crystal here to craft and we can craft five of those now because we have five buckets worth and it should go. Oh, you know what? I bet you we're short on something else here. Yeah, we're short on fire charges. All right, so I didn't tell the machine how to make fire charges yet. So let's put the recipe for that in there. Uh, just like that, encode that. Pop that into this bad boy. I'm getting so many recipes in here, it's starting to lag a little bit when I open it. And when I just kind of scroll through the recipes here, it's uh, lagging out just a little bit, ever so slightly. But now we should be able to see it go. It's actually already done. So we can take our lava crystals. And what we'll do with those is take those over to our Tinker's Construct work area. And I made myself a new sword. It is a cutlass. And its name is Cuddy. And I thought that we would add a fire aspect onto this thing. It'd be kind of cool to uh, see what we can do with that. So let's go. Uh, I think each one of these does like a certain amount of time of fire. So it does lava attack. Oh, that looks awesome. It's got auto repair, sharpness. Sharpness is almost leveled out. Uh, lava, and then I'll put looting on the rest of it. That's what we'll do with the rest of us. I think from what I've read, let's see, here's my book. I think the book says that it's uh, each, each, each lava crystal is worth like five seconds of burn time or something like that. Let's take a look here quick and make sure we got that right. I don't want to give out misinformation. Let's go check all modifiers all the way at the end. Let's see, modifiers, lava crystal, auto smelt, not quite that one. We want the lava crystal for, uh... oh, we did the wrong thing. It's auto smelt. I don't want that. I want, I want fiery. Oh, I went the wrong thing. So auto smelt is going to cook things up. That's not too useful unless I'm killing animals. Uh, so it'll automatically kill ki when we kill a pig or something like that, it's going to automatically cook it. That's okay. That's not a bad aspect. What I want is a fiery aspect. I totally did the wrong thing there. I was so excited about my, uh, my, uh, ability to make lava crystals. I didn't even realize they weren't worth too much. So we'll put those in there. We're not going to do the auto smelting again. What we'll do is grab some blaze here and add fiery onto there. So let's get some blaze powder and we have 49. That should be plenty here. And we'll add that aspect onto there. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to get a another thing if I want to add on the luck onto this which of course I do we'll have to add on uh, another thing here quick so let's go mm, let's see where can we put it I think I think we might be out of modifiers on it even already that's all right we can actually fix that yeah we're out of modifiers on it um, okay so what we can do is create an extra modifier with I think believe it was a gold block and a or a gold apple and a diamond block or something like that let's see here quick it's at the end here Let's take a look. A diamond and a gold block will create an extra modifier for it. So we can add the fiery onto there, or we can add luck on there, I suppose, would, or looting would probably be what we want. Or and we can also, once we get another star, we can actually add on a, a fourth modifier. Um, that might be pretty good. Okay, look, let's start with let's start with adding on the fire aspect like I wanted to. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be too useful because it's gonna automatically cook everything we kill with it, but that does that doesn't seem too useful. Uh, so we'll get a gold block. We have plenty of gold from our our mining efforts here and we need a diamond that's actually pretty cheap then now that we've got everything set up here now my uh, my pack here is getting quite full and that's why it's starting to lag a little bit you just notice just ever so slightly there's a little bit of lag on the ME system it's getting very very full so it might be reaching capacity as far as our quarry goes and actually we probably don't need any more than we are ever need have right now in there um, so we'll go like this we'll go like this and that should add on another modifier and then we'll go like this and go like this and then we'll add on 25 blazes onto there so that's nine that's 18 that's uh that's plenty okay so that's one two 24 and one perfect perfect planning now we have an awesome looking sword here look at this thing that is a good looking sword yeah looking badass so all right so let's go take a test drive on this bad boy i don't know where we can find any enemies around here Probably down here, there's always some uh, poorly lit area. So my armor is back, my MPS armor I've gotten all straightened out now. Uh, I, can fl I can't I can fly just yet, but I can have, I do have the jet boots, I don't have the jet pack yet. Uh, so let's see if we can uh, hit this guy. And one hit, one kill. That's a slime though, that's not that big a deal. Let's take a look and see how it does on Creeper. Now that'd be kind of cool to see. Oh, there's one right now. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. 15 damage, so that's actually two hits, and we can just let him burn here. And that'll take care of him. Oh my god, that's awesome. So, uh, he's gonna run around screaming with his hair on fire. And uh, we'll just sit back and watch him burn. I got my sprinting back. That was the biggest thing I missed, actually, I found out from my MPS armor. There's nothing that can really replicate that in another mod, uh, the sprinting ability. 
But I found out we could do some jewelry and it's not gonna go over the top of what we have. So we can get super overpowered with some jewelry, I think. That might be a good idea. Um, we'll work on that next episode with the Mary Culture jewelry, I think, and getting ourselves uh, a couple new aspects, a couple new enchantments, if we have enough in, uh, experience to do so. Those experiences can cost up to 60 with the uh, Mary Culture mod. So we'll have to see if we can actually, how many we can actually do. Oh, that worked nicely. He's got, he's got only 11 left. But that's actually gonna- oh, hey, get out of here, you. So I wonder if cooking the, the rotten flesh does anything for us. It doesn't seem to do anything. I think if we did animals, it would obviously, uh, do something. So let's go up top here quick. We're at the, uh, the old house now. Ah, home sweet home, right? The water tower. Oh, the memories. Gosh, this is- oh man, spawn's still here? Like, what, is anything left in here? There's some uranium blocks. Oh, I could probably grab those. You might be able to use those in the, uh, the reactor. Anything else worthwhile here? Oh, our water turbines. Man, remember the days? The water turbines? Uh, yeah, those are, those are good times. Um, let's head over to... Let's head over towards the village and maybe we'll spot some animals on the way. I'll fly up. The only thing with the... The only problem with the jet boots is that they're very slow for rising up in the air. You don't get a lot of thrust. But that's okay. We can... We can, uh, get by with that. As long as I'm going with a good lateral motion, that'll be pretty good. Okay, let's try the sheep out here. Yo, he likes it. It uh, didn't automatically cook it. Oh, that's too bad. It, I thought it would do it. The auto smelt is totally useless on a sword, unfortunately. Uh, unless I break something with a sword that would be smelted, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I really don't know why, why you'd want auto smelt on a sword. I kind of screwed that up, unfortunately. Making the sword uh, a little less cool, but then again, we get the nice uh, glowing orange aspect on it, which you couldn't get unless you put the auto smelt thing on it, so I kind of like that still. Um, anyways, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Survival Sea Lab. We took a little bit of a look at a fluid crafting system and how we're getting that set up. We will be working on other things in the future to improve our processes for that as well. I'll be back for another episode very soon. I hope you're enjoying the series, and if you are, please let me know in the comments, and I'll see you back next time for more. Have a good night.